Today, I'm gonna to show you how to connect everything in your studio. We'll set up your audio interface, mic, guitar, keyboard, computer, everything you need to start recording. If you don't have any gear yet, don't worry, I've created a video letting you know what you need to start making music today. You can watch that video here. I give you some great suggestions for gear to buy at different budget levels. Also, if you're looking for the cheapest studio possible, I've created a video showing you how to put together a complete studio for $350, and that includes the computer. I'll put a link to that in the video description. To make things easy for you, I'm going to list every single item you see today, from the music gear to the cables and everything else in the video description. I've chosen the best budget gear and tested it myself. If you're new around here, I'm Sanjay C. I have lots of videos on music production and the latest music gear on my channel. Consider subscribing. I always get straight to the point in my videos and tutorials. Let's get started with the computer first. You can get a lot done with the computer alone, including making beats and complete songs. Before you start doing anything, you need to install a digital audio workstation, which is software. Many audio interfaces and other music gear like MIDI keyboards come with free DAWs to get you started. You usually download it after registering your device on the manufacturer's website. I use Ableton Live as my own DAW, so I'll demonstrate other features in this video today using that. Settings are similar, in other DAWs. Once you've got your DAW installed, even if you haven't connected anything else, you can start to hear sounds by choosing your computer's built-in sound card in your DAW's audio settings. If you don't have a computer yet, I have a video suggesting some good options here. You can connect speakers or headphones directly to your computer too. But wait, an audio interface will let us do a lot more. Let's move on to that before connecting other stuff. An audio interface will help us record external sounds like vocals from a mic, an electric guitar, or a synthesizer. An audio interface connects by USB to your computer. One cable, that's it. Once you've connected it, you need to switch your DAW's audio settings to use this audio interface instead of your computer's sound card. Of course, once you've got an interface connected, you want the interface to handle the incoming and outgoing sounds. So, connect your speakers to your audio interface instead of your computer. You typically have two type of connectors on the back of your speakers, RCA or TRS quarter inch. They do the same thing, but the TRS connectors, which are balanced, may help reduce interference. So if you've got that connection, use it. The audio interface also has a headphone output. Okay, we're all set with the audio going out of the computer. How about audio coming in? Well, back in your DAW's audio settings, select the audio interface as your input device as well. If you keep your audio interface connected all the time, you shouldn't have to mess with these settings ever again. So can we begin recording now? Not yet. One last thing, your audio interface has multiple inputs. You need to let your DAW know which input to record for each track. Let's connect a mic to input one on the audio interface. Now back in my DAW, I select input one on my track. You can see that Ableton is registering the sound coming from the mic. I'm using a condenser microphone, so I also activated the phantom power feature on my audio interface to power the mic. There we go. Now we've got signal and we can record. Hey, if you're finding this information useful, hit the like button and leave a comment below if you have any questions. All right, we've got the audio coming in and audio going out, and we can record external sounds now. You're doing great, let's keep going. If you've got a MIDI keyboard, let's connect that. Most keyboards these days come with USB connections, which means you can simply connect them by USB to your computer and start playing the instrument sounds included in your DAW. I'm using the Artorio Mini Lab Mark II, which is a great choice. Remember, when you're recording with a computer, you have tons of software-based sounds, virtual instruments, that you can play. The sound is generated by your computer, not the MIDI keyboard. If you have an old keyboard, you may only have the old MIDI ins and outs. If this is the case, you'll need a MIDI to USB converter. Some audio interfaces have that built in, but if yours doesn't, you can buy something like the Roland UM1, which converts the MIDI connection to a USB connection. Once you've made the connection, select the MIDI keyboard in your DAW under the MIDI settings. If your MIDI keyboard has setup instructions for your specific DAW, it's a good idea to follow those instructions so you can get the most out of your keyboard and do things like controlling the mixer and software instruments 
right from your keyboard. Most MIDI controller keyboards, even the cheap ones, come with lots of virtual instrument sounds for free. The Artoria Mini Lab comes with tons of vintage synth sounds. Native Instruments keyboards have great options too. And you can even buy your own instruments like the amazing Omnisphere. If you're looking for a good MIDI keyboard to start with, I compared the best available now in a video here. By the way, you've been watching me connect a few cables today. I really like the Hosa cables in my studio. They haven't let me down yet. I've also tested the Amazon Basics cables for a little while, particularly with my microphones. They've been pretty good so far. Links are in the description. You saw me using a MIDI controller keyboard so far. They don't make sounds on their own. They need the computer. But what if you have a keyboard that has sounds built in and you want to use those? Maybe you've got a synthesizer like the Arturia Mini Brute you see here. Well, in addition to connecting the MIDI through USB, you'll need to output the sound from the keyboard or synthesizer to your computer. You do this by connecting the output of your synth to the inputs of the audio interface. If your synth has MIDI out and audio out, you can use it as a MIDI controller as well to play sounds on your computer and also to record the audio coming out of the synth. What if you have a MIDI controller and a synth? You can use the MIDI controller to control the synth as well. This is possible because my DAW recognizes that anything I play on a keyboard can be sent to any device, virtual instruments inside my DAW, or even external synths. That's great because you can get one nice big keyboard and connect all smaller or bigger synths you want and control everything from one keyboard. I've connected three things by USB so far, and maybe you're running out of USB ports on your computer already. You'll need a USB hub. I use the Anker AH241 USB hub. It's reasonably priced and it's built very well. Don't cheap out on your USB hub. This one is great and you can get it by using the link in the description. With the computer, audio interface, mic, headphones, speakers, MIDI keyboard, and synth connected, you've got a great setup already. But can you do more? Yes. What about guitars? Well, those are pretty easy. You can simply connect your guitar cable directly into your audio interface and start playing. Most audio interfaces have a high Z or instrument setting on the inputs. Make sure you use those for your guitars. This ensures that you get the optimal level of input when you're recording. When your guitar is connected, you select that channel in your DAW and start recording. If you're using an acoustic guitar, you'll need to use a mic to record its sound. If you're looking for an excellent mic to record your acoustic guitar, I tested a bunch of budget mics and give you some sample guitar recordings in a video here. Finally, with all this microphone recording and mixing going on, you may benefit from acoustic treatment in your room. You can buy pretty cheap foam-based panels these days. The flat square ones help by absorbing high frequencies and the triangular bass traps help absorb bass. I'll add some links to some cheap acoustic treatment options in the video description, but watch out for a future video on my channel showing you how to set it up. I wanna to touch on one other topic before we close. Virtual instruments and effects called plugins, also VSTs, these are gonna be vital tools in your computer recording. Installing them is the easy part. You can download instruments and effects from different websites and they install in the appropriate directory. Well, most of the time. Sometimes you may have to add a folder to your DAW's preferences to tell your DAW where to look for them. Easy enough. Once you start installing lots of instruments and effects, you may start running out of space. I use a Samsung T5 external solid state drive to store lots of my instrument files. It's really small, light, and super fast. I highly recommend it. I'll add a link to it in the video description. If you're looking for some free instruments and effects, watch the news reports on my channel. I always share a few free plugins. If you have any questions on setting up your studio, leave them in the comments below. Keep making the music you love and check out one of these videos next.